So this page sets you up to smash. Let me confirm the page. I think it's in there. Yep. So on page 38, I'm going to give you time during our jam for this, which we're approaching actually. 38 has four problems where you get to do all these things that I've just done. So good practice. Hopefully you pay attention. You got all these pro tips down and you're ready to smash that. Okay. So that's for you to do. The last thing I want to look at is real world scenarios. All right. Uh, will I be ruining anyone's day by removing what's on the board right now? Are you working on something else there, Pedro? No. Well, if, if you need this, take it. No. Oh, you don't need it? Okay. I saw the pencil. I didn't want you to. I'll learn my name. <laughs> I think you could write your name without that. I believe in you. <laughs> okay, cool. So, let's interpret some real world graphs. This data is what an intersection looks like. If a car passes through the intersection, we add it up on here. <laughs> and then it's set per hour. We start our graph at 5 a.m. and the X values are every hour after that. So before 5 a.m. we don't have much data, but we can kind of suspect there's not a whole lot of cars that go through an intersection at two in the morning, right? Most of us are asleep. Although some of us are coming back from late night jobs or maybe we had to go to Denny's in the middle of the night because we got hungry. Sometimes it happens. So this shows the hours that have passed after five. So you got to kind of count forward like seven, nine, eleven. Here's noon. Okay, that's lunchtime. And 16 is going to be like 2100 hours. That's nine o'clock. So we got from 5 a.m. to nine o'clock. And how many cars go to the intersection is plotted per hour. Okay, and then we get this trend that they drew in between. So there's no symmetry, there's no balance to this graph. It's kind of random because it's a real world thing. That's cool. And look what we have to figure out. Increasing interval, decreasing interval, relative minima, relative maxima. All right, not a huge deal. It's the same situation, it's just got a lot of turns. So let's get the maxima first. And we'll get the minima next. We're looking for like the tops of the mountains. Those are your local maximums or your relative maxima. Let's look at your relative minimas. Well, these are all the troughs, all the little valleys, the bowls. And there's two of them. Now that we know where they are, let's list them. This first one is x equals four. This one is x equals eight. And then last one, 12. So every four hours we got maximum traffic through the intersection. That's kind of interesting. Because after these times, the amount goes down the next hour. Relative minimum, pretty simple, same thing. Once we identify where the bowls are, just grab me the x value that goes with it. 5 and 10. Increasing intervals, I'm going to highlight them in black. As I was rising up, let's put it in black. I see three beautiful increasing intervals. And in green, let's go with uh, decreasing intervals. Oh, I grabbed blue. Once they're shaded in, it's very easy to list them. Increasing intervals are the black sections. So when x is equal to anything between 0 and 4, 
when x is anything between uh, next increasing interval is from 5 to 8. Third increasing interval starts at 10 to 12. That's it for increasing intervals. Finally, listing the green sections for decreasing. Between four and five, we're losing it. From eight to 10, we're losing it. And the last one here is from 12 to 15. And there we go. Got all the magic. Estimate interval where the function is positive, negative, increasing, decreasing, and the x coordinates of any relative extremities and any behavior in the graph. So we didn't actually list all the things here. We didn't sell where it's positive or negative, but we never go below the lowest bar there. So it's always positive. And the final end behavior of the graph, look where it terminates, it's descending. So end behavior is a, de is a decrease. Right. Just about out of here, ladies. Are those ladies present? Just about out of here, gentlemen. The last uh, section here before the quiz, if we roll to page 40, it's going to tell you real world graphs, and it's going to either tell you to draw the graph or it's going to tell you to describe the graph that's present in a story mode. Before I erase the board, does anybody still need this? Let's get rid of the board. And talk about this last page, this last section. I'll set you to jamming and you'll be off. We are nearly through the day. Actually, you know what? I should say ladies and gentlemen because of the, of the video. We might have ladies watching after all. Okay. Number one, real world graphs. The graph shows the height of a roller coaster during a single ride. Describe the roller coaster ride. Here's me on the roller coaster. All right, so I start off on the ground, I get in. I get into the car. And I have to wait a little while. I gotta wait for like the seat belts, you know? I'm gonna say wait for seat belting. Cause there's always the guy who doesn't put a seat belt on and the, the attendant has to go over and fix it. All right, so we're seat belted in. That gets me up to here. All right, I haven't gone up or down. I might've started to cruise sideways along the track. What happens next? In blue, I'm gonna go up. Now I get on that, that. Yeah, you can hear it clicking up, clicking up, clicking up. And then it's like, you get up here and click, 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 click. That last click goes off and you start to feel that acceleration because now you're going down. 